Hi everybody, this is your host Travis, and welcome back to Teeple's Corner. This is day 13 of Evergreen Month, where we're focusing on the mechanics. We construct an entire deck around one particular mechanic, and today's subject is indestructible. And let's go look at the, the official definition of indestructible. Effects that say destroy don't destroy a permanent with indestructible, and if it's a creature, it can't be destroyed by damage. Uh, so... There's, there's, I actually have two decks that are focused around indestructible. This is the first one. I think this is a good one to use to kind of demonstrate the mechanic if you're new to the game. Uh, if you're an old hat, you can just, uh, you know, we got all the, the, the cards listed in the deck list down below in the YouTube description in the text box. And you guys can just forward the gameplay if you want. But we're going to go through the deck and show you what's all in here. 62 cards, show the overview, 14 creatures, not a ton of creatures. Uh, 25 lands and it's uh, predominantly black and white so here we have two light of hopes one sentinel's eyes to give a creature plus one in vigilance one blazing volley to take out a bunch of one one creatures two swift response a lot of these are just early cheap cards that we use to do removal of, of the opponent's creatures epic downfall to get rid of a creature that's mono value three or greater one copy of Forever Young, take a creature that's from our graveyard, put it on top of the library. Actually, for Forever Young, you can put more than one. So if you've got 10 creatures in your graveyard, if you want, you can put all 10 of them on the top of your library, but you only get to draw one card after that. You could also put zero creatures on top of your graveyard if you know what the next card in your library is and you just want to draw and get to that card if that's vital. One copy of Heartless Act, destroy a creature. One copy of Malefic... Um, I always have trouble with the pronunciation. Malefic Scythe. Okay, it gives each creature plus one, plus one, and when a creature dies, you get to put a soul counter on it, which gives it another plus one, plus one counter the next creature you put it on. Two copies of Oblivion's Hunger. This gives a creature indestructible until the end of the turn, uh, and this particular card, this version of it, has if a creature has a plus one, plus one counter on it already, you get to draw a card. One copy of Dark Tactics to exile the target creature. This is good to get rid of an indestructible. Uh, but however, you got to be careful if you don't control a human, you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. So if, you, if you're about to die from a 7-7 seven, seven creature, uh, exiling it won't matter if you don't have a human on the board because you'll still take 7 points of damage even if you get rid of the creature. Three copies of Generals Enforcers. Legendary humans you have, you control, have indestructible. So this gives the other creatures that are, uh, the other humans that are legendary, the indestructible trait. Has an additional ability. You can spend four and exile a target card from the graveyard. And if it happens to be a creature card that you exiled, you get a 1 1 human soldier token. Here's a legendary creature that would benefit from the General's indestructible. He's got Death Touch, Shovel, Bane of Monsters. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get to put a bounty counter on one creature, and whenever that particular creature dies, you gain three life and draw a card. Then for your next upkeep, you get to put a, yet another bounty counter on another different creature. One copy of Heliod's Sun Crown. This is a very popular card. Legendary enchantment creature. He starts off as an indestructible enchantment, so you can't destroy the enchantment. When Devotion comes into play and you get five permanents down on the field, uh, the, it's good and important to note for Heliod, Heli to cost two colorless and one white mana to get down. That one mana counts as one point towards his devotion. So you really just need four other um, white mana symbols on the battlefield as permanent to give him a total of five devotion to get him out and turn him into a creature as well. Then he'll become not just an enchantment, but he'll become a creature then as well. Uh, you spend a couple of mana to give another target lifelink. And whenever you do gain life, whether it's from the creature damage from that lifelink or another spell that gives you life, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. So ideally you want to get him out first, get a couple counters going, and that way when you have to use Oblivion's Hunger, uh, you get the draw advantage from that effect. Doesn't always happen that way, but just letting you know some of the synergies in the deck. One copy of Suffocating Fumes, again to get rid of a bunch of swarming 1-1 one -one creatures. Four copies of Soul Seer. Uh, this is in here to remind you of ways to get rid of Indestructible. Okay, there are some cards in Magic that do this. Uh, deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker, but that permanent also loses indestructible until end of turn. So if the creature is naturally indestructible, like Brash Taunter or something, or it's uh, got one of our instants on it that gives it indestructible until end of turn, 
this card counters that and kills it anyway. It kind of depends on the order of things. For example, I think, we might have to test this out someday, but if I cast Soul Seer on a creature and then they cast Indestructible, does it become Indestructible and counter the Soul Seer because it takes place last? Or if they've put Indestructible on and I, I think I think that Soul Seer removes it no matter the order of events. Because it says it loses it until end of turn. So I don't know if there's a way for it to lose it and then you give it back and it counts. Um, I haven't tested that out. I haven't come into a situation to try that. But that would be a fun experiment just to make sure. One copy of Broken Wings. Take care of target artifacts or enchantments or a creature with flying. One Cultivate to get some land. One Palladium Mirror. Uh, this is uh, basically mostly just there to get me the two colorless mana. Two Spark Hunter Masticors. These guys have protection from Planeswalkers. They are, do have an extra expense. You have to discard a card as well as cast the mana to get them out. Uh, but you can just spend a mana and one mana point deals damage to target Planeswalkers. So it's a good way to get rid of Planeswalkers. And if you spend three mana it gains Indestructible itself until the end of the turn. One Eat to Extinction that exiles a target creature or planeswalker. One Out Muscle to put a plus one counter on target creature control. Have it fight another creature that you don't control. And uh, this one uh, catches my attention because of the indestructible theme today. Uh, Adamant, if at least three green mana was spent to cast a spell, the creature you control gains indestructible. So you can have it fight any creature. Doesn't really matter if the creature dies or not, but your creature will live. That's another one that can help out with... Uh, Oblivion's Hunger by adding a plus one plus one counter. So we've got a we've got that theme occurring a couple couple places in the deck. Three copies of Resolute Rider. This is part of why the deck can be expensive because of the ongoing cost, but you can spend two to give him lifelink and spend three to make him indestructible for a turn. One Elspeth Conquers Death, to exile target permanent and return one of your creatures from the graveyard. One copy of Dreadworm. And this is with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield, Dreadworm gains indestructible at the end of that turn. Two copies of Brash Taunter. Uh, he is naturally indestructible. And whenever he's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the target opponent. Uh, I will probably have a whole theme week on him at some point. Uh, because you can also spend mana, tap him, and have him fight another target creature. So, for example, if I tap him and fight a 5-5 creature... The 5 damage that's dealt to him doesn't destroy him, but that 5 does get dealt to his target opponent. So that can be a game ender under the right circumstances. The rest is land. So we got 4 colors. We've got just a couple of plain swamps and mountains and forests. Just one forest, and then the rest is all the duplicate lands and pathways and that kind of thing. Two Fabled Passage. That's the deck. We're going to take it out for a spin now. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, guess what? We're a new channel. So go ahead. We need your likes and we need your subscribes. Please do some clicking for us if you like anything of what you see. Thanks. Only two lands. That is not the best way to start a game. But increasingly common these days. At least for my decks it is. Tap land first. Another tap land. I just need a splash of white and a splash of red. We're going to stall on this a little bit and get some colorless. It may cost us four points if it gets down. Yeah, I should have seen that coming. This particular uh, combination is the red green deck where Warden comes down and then Rampart Smasher is very common. So we're going to go get the red. Wouldn't have mattered last turn if we used Fable to get to the land anyway. It would have been tapped, so we wouldn't have been able to use it then. Come on. There we go. And let's see, we might as well go ahead and use 
to attack now. Fifty-fifty odds he has another smasher ready to come down. Oh, something similar. have enough land to bring down Shevel at the same time. If he has a protection spell on him, real trouble. No, we're good. Does nothing for an entire turn. Unusual. Okay, so I guess it's best to put down a shovel. He might have some drug damage he's been holding in reserve. But we'll bring the scythe down too. See if the creatures last long enough to equip them. Why are you looking at my shovel? I really need a white source so I can make them indestructible. Okay, no other choice. The bounty counter goes on the only opposing creature that's around. I'm still having mana problems, which is disgusting. And I guess we want to stick it on Chevel, because he's the one most likely to be killed right now. The good thing is, I do have Forever Young to bring him back. And as usual, my opponent has no trouble with enough lands, and he probably has a ram through or something, or a rabbit bite. Is he holding it for a bigger threat? There we go, he is committed. We'll go ahead and give up Shovel. It gives us a counter on the scythe. And we still get the benefit the Chevel had where we gained three life, which we could use. And not enough mana for that. Okay, here's a white source finally. Uh, we don't have a human out yet. We will if we put the enforcer out. Equip the Enforcer. And maybe that'll save him from any direct damage or one of the green creature fighting spells. It won't save him from a Rampart Smasher. Do we want to risk it? No. We'll take the damage. You kept two mana open and untapped. I think you got something. human for a very particular reason. 
because I have this and I need a human so I don't lose life as I get rid of the Smasher. And let's use this now and we'll put Shovel on top. And thanks to the Forever Young card, not only does it go on top, we get to draw them. But we don't get to cast them this turn. You know what we could do? We could get Mastercor down here. And we'll get rid of the Resolute Rider. Should we attack or should we block? I think we're going to stay in block for right now. He's thinking a long time. Another Manticore. Okay, you know what? Let's see. Legendary. Yeah, we're not going to block him again. I want to get Shovel down and make him an invulnerable death touch blocker. And I want to have enough mana to make Mastercore invulnerable, well, indestructible too. Invulnerable, indestructible. Okay, so we're going to put him down now. And instead of making Mastercore indestructible, we'll just get rid of one of the threats. This feels good to me right now, as long as he doesn't remove my Enforcer. Really? That's kind of strange to me. I'm not going to let you through anymore. And maybe you'll kill the Master Corps, but... I should still be able to kill the Rimrock Knight, too. Okay. That's what he's been holding up the entire time. It's the Rimrock Knight. Is that worth it to get rid of one creature? Okay, let's see. What do we need? I think we need a lot of white sources. And I don't think he has anything that'll have haste with seven. He could have a questing beast, but we're going to try this out. We're tapped out and all our creatures are tapped. And Rimrock Knight is the best you can do. I'm not impressed. And I'm going to come get you. And I'm going to use my lifelink to get some of my health back because I need it. Now why is it they they pound on me and they pound on me and then the moment that it looks like I might have some fun with the deck they turn around and scoop. It's hard for me to show you the real benefits of all the synergies of this deck when they keep doing that, but you did get to see General's Enforcer making my legendary guy indestructible, which really helped me to defend and whittle away at them until we were in a position to turn the tables. 
and it probably was going to be fairly simple for me to win after this. Sometimes I just want to show you, but sometimes you're playing a good player and he's been around the block long enough to know when the tide has turned and when uh, discretion is a better part of valor, I guess. Alright, we've got three out of the four colors. That's good to start. Starting to look like a night deck already. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can get the right mix of mana put down our creatures. We're mostly in a reactionary mode for for this battle. So if he's not going to do anything, that's kind of to our benefit for the first few turns. Oh, blah, blah. Okay, we are prepared for stuff like that. We like that you're tapped out. He does get the 2-2 two -two Knight out of it. Might have been better to use the Epic Downfall. But he's going to have something that's just as expensive, if not more expensive at some point. It's going to be a risk to put down our only creature because he probably does have something to, to destroy it. Resolute Rider is one that you almost want to have seven mana of the right color to put down so you can protect it the same turn you put it down. But, you know what, in case he does have something to destroy, let's not take more damage than we need to. He could have enough protection. He could still have enough protection, he just decided not to use it, but... Let's see, that's the toughness, and that's two. I don't want to use that just yet. We're still high enough in health that little 2-2 two -two pricks of damage aren't going to really alarm us for three or four turns. That's more like what we're starting to see. Usually the night decks start off a little bit faster than this with cheaper creatures at the beginning. Okay, finally we got two creatures, so we're willing to risk one. If he tries to get away with a simple shock, we'll go ahead and counter that. And if he doesn't have removal, then we have an even better chance. Not this turn, of course. Um, let's see. So we're just going to pass entirely. We can exile. Let's see, he's got lifelink there. How do we want to do things? I think we're going to leave Brash Taunter where he is and we'll concentrate on Resolute Rider. We can give him both Indestructible and Lifelink. Fireborn Knight can go to 4-4 right now. 
and now he can't because he used too much mana. Is my one Resolute Rider going to hold him off? Oh, that's disgusting. But not as much as you might think. Okay, because first, we're going to exile the one that they're trying to pop. And that one becomes useless. And... We're going to destroy that enchantment. Not enough to do what I need to do to survive with him. But... Let's surprise him. And get rid of the life. Link. And hopefully they don't have another pacify right up their sleeve. Or we are in trouble. But I've got another light of hope to destroy the enchantment, so that's not necessarily a deal breaker. If they don't know how Brash Taunter works, they may still try and attack. Like flyers. Is that all you're gonna do? You're going to attack. Okay, not with the youthful. Yeah, you are gonna attack with. You. Okay, we're gonna take the four because that gets rid of the youthful knight permanently. Just gonna learn how the, the brash taunter's effect works. And I've got a lot of options here, but I actually do want to wait. He doesn't have trample, so I've got a way to block and destroy, and that is nice. I'm glad I waited. No, we're not going to let you get away with that. That's what I need the Heartless Act for. Now I want you to attack. Thank you. You can take that damage to yourself. None to me. And I have enough mana to get rid of Shale. Shale, how do you pronounce that? And you take one more point of damage. Next. For my next trick. This is where the worm begins to turn. Don't look at your knight. He can't attack. You're just going to embarrass yourself. Okay. Do we want to just get rid of the knight now? Or do we want to have some fun? Let's have some fun. Because he's not blocking, we only spend two for the lifelink. We double our life total. Start to put pressure on him, and we still got a blocker. He wants to put out somebody. Oh yeah, by all means, you can attack now. You're five five, right? Come on. Okay, five five is too much, but we're after the attack. So now we use Brash Taunter's ability. When it's safe to tap him, do five more damage to you. Then we do it again. And we get rid of you entirely. Oh, I used my red mana. Never mind. Okay, so... Do I want to attack or do I just want to take it easy? I like having vigilance on my guy.
Let's see. I need to spend it on indestructible. So since I have vigilance, I still have a blocker, even though I'm tapped out. Okay, Cole changes things a little bit because if he dies, he can bring him right back. Um, I'm not invulnerable, so I'm going to take the damage. But it matters the order we do things. Kill him first, and then attack. And it seems like it got close, but... As soon as we started getting the indestructibles out and onto the field, they really couldn't keep up after that. Indestructible saves the day yet again! Okay, we still need some green and white. But we are going to see if we can do this without running into too much trouble. Missing a land drop on your first turn is not good. That is a sign of trouble. Okay. It's a little bit better. Not the right color yet, but at least we can get on the board. We always have to worry about blue having counter spells and if they feel like countering anything they feel like. You know, Moist Prophecy, that's a good card. I like that card. Not a whole lot for me to do here. Just go hit him for two. Call it a day. So they're committing to spend all of their their land next turn to do, well, almost all their land to cast the cultivate spell. And we're kind of stuck because we haven't got a single land yet. It's not entirely true. We got another mountain, but that's duplicatory at this stage. Sometimes the shuffling algorithm decides, you know, if you won two games in a row, we're just not going to give you the ammo you need to do it again. Gets his land, gets the extra draw. It's good to be ghost crazy right now. Does that is the LV Roman numerals or does that mean from Las Vegas? Which is it? Feed the bear. Alright, he's got enough land to do just about anything he wants to, and finally we get some green. It's tapped, but we'll take it. He's not going to block with the carry to, so I know i got two points that I can do for him still. He gets to look at what's coming up for me and him next. I don't get to see anything. Gross. but not necessarily deadly. <laughs> He's got a negate ready. And he used his carry to cast it. He really wanted to get rid of my Palladium Mirror, didn't he? Okay, so with that in mind, we've got the green, we've got the blue. 
we need to go get some light sources. And we better do it now while we have a chance. Fortunately, that means we can't do anything against him this turn. I didn't want to put out General's Enforcer. I thought he might be able to do something to him too easily. Okay, first thing we'll do... Are you going to let us get away with this? We know he's packing lots of counters. Okay, so there's the second copy in the gate. So we're going to have to take the damage. Okay, so the next question is, will you let us do this? Okay. And finally, will you let us do this? And this. Wow. Only countered one of the four spells, but that rendered his own game spell worthless. He didn't need any more card draw. He's got enough mana to do whatever he wants. Oh, this old thing. Okay, let's see. That's three. What do we want to do? Let's just get rid of it if we can. Just to see if we can. It's not the worst thing if it stays. But... He's holding priority like he has another counter spell. And he does still get another gold token at the end of the enchantment saga. He's got another one. Puts a counter on it right away. He just needs 10. Okay, that didn't necessarily help me the best, but... What do I want to do? Do I want to use the Elspeth Conqueror's Death or not? Strixhaven works best with creatures. And as long as he doesn't have creatures down, I get to control that, and I get to take a point off. So if I can take off the point every time he puts on a point, I don't have to worry about losing the game to that ar ar uh, artifact. I do have to worry about stuff like that. How about if we get rid of it first? about if we get rid of it first, is what I said. Thank you. Your counter spells are gone. Your creature is gone. Your spell is worthless. I know I can put down my other creatures now because we worked our way through it. Now if he has a Cure of Best of Sea God, I'm still probably dead, but we're going to commit to this. Back to zero for the stadium. Unless he has a draw seven, I'm not worried about ominous seas just yet. And he did. Hey, scoops. Three and zero oh for the uh, little demonstration of indestructible. I'm not sure how much indestructible played a played a role in all that. 
because we didn't get a single indestructible creature down at first. <laughs> That's really every other card that was in the deck to handle creature removal and stuff like that. Uh, indestructible was coming up next. We didn't quite get to take advantage of it. But that's kind of the, the idea of creating a balanced deck, is you don't want to rely entirely on just one thing. You want to have balance so that if they have something else, you can counter it. And you don't have a crutch where you need one specific card or one specific trait to win. Um, however, the other two matches before this were better examples of the indestructible uh, uh, mechanic. So, we're going to leave it there, I think. We'll tune in tomorrow. We'll have a different deck for a different mechanic. And if you like what you saw, hit like for us. If you want to be notified of the every time we put up some new content, hit subscribe. And uh, let us know in the comments how we're doing. Thanks. Have a good one.